Hello everybody, this is Nate here and today I'm going to go over a tutorial uh, t on how to create an HDR image. Um, I'm using three different uh, programs. Well, actually, I used to use three different programs. Well, I just downloaded um, HDR Soft's newest version of Photomatix Pro. Now, if you used uh, Photomatix Pro in the past, this upgrade is free of charge, so you don't need to pay for it, which is a great deal. Now, also, I've downloaded Lightroom, uh, an export plugin, and this is great because I use Lightroom exclusively for developing all my images. Uh, I shoot in RAW format, and if you don't shoot in RAW, I highly recommend it if you do any kind of post processing because it's just like using negatives from film uh, cameras. <coughs> Excuse me. So I also downloaded that plugin. Now I'm going to go through. See, the way I used to do it was uh, I would develop them in Lightroom and then take them over, export them to Photoshop, and then into Photomatix Pro. And that just seemed to be. Uh, too many steps so with this version you can actually export right from Lightroom so here we are in Lightroom 2 and I've already selected three images uh, it's recommended a minimum of three I will be doing a tutorial on how to create an HDR type image uh, using just one photo uh, but that's a different tutorial so here we are I have three images they're the same composition just three different exposures and then it's too easy you just go up here to file go down here after you've um, installed the plugin using your plugin manager your plugins will show up in plugin extras so then you just click on export to Photomatix now it says you're about ready to export to Photomatix Pro with standard settings and this is a 16-bit TIFF uh, with the OD Adobe RGB color space now this is fine you can just hit export if you don't want this you can hit cancel and then go in and change your uh, settings so I'm just gonna hit uh, export and you can see the status bar up here um, is working now depending on how many images you have this could take quite a while uh, since I'm only using three you can see it's it's moving pretty pretty fast here uh, it's going to be working on that third photo now. There we go. And since I just did this, I am going to open Photomatix Pro. And, well, see, I have the license for it. So I'll just continue with that. Uh, we'll generate an HDR image. Hit OK. And it automatically opens the three images that we just exported. Hit OK. Uh, this first dialog box here, you want to keep aligned source images checked uh, because it's going to try and correct for any horizontal and vertical shifts. Uh, or you could go by matching features. Um, I just leave that unchecked. You can select uh, reduce chromatic aberrations, and that's due to your lens of your camera, reduce noise, attempt to reduce ghosting artifacts, and then uh, all the tonal curve uh, profiles down here. I leave everything pretty much by default and then you can just hit generate HDR. Again, uh, depending on how many images you have, this could take quite a while. Uh, I only have three images coming through so it shouldn't take too terribly long. Okay, so now it's finished and this doesn't look all that great, does it? Uh, the reason being is that standard monitors can't uh, correctly display the large range of information. So, it comes up with this. But if you look up here, up in the upper left, you'll see that where I move my cursor, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. See how it's, it's a lot lighter right there. Uh, so, there is the information still there. You just can't really see it in this uh, image. So what we need to do is go down here to Tone Mapping, click on that. You want to get a larger preview. 
so you can see exactly what you're doing all right and then over here is where all of your settings are the strength is the strength of the effect so if you increase that it increases the the effect your color saturation you usually want to keep that kind of high uh, depending on what kind of image you're going for what kind of result uh, you can blow out everything and make it look like a complete mess um, you've seen them probably before they look like a painted uh, image and that's due to this light smoothing here the higher the light smoothing the more realistic your uh, image is gonna look so if I'm on very high that smooths the light uh, quite a bit now if I go way down here and pretty much just shut it off you can see the effect is just that's not exactly what I'm looking for so again it depends on uh, the result that you're looking for sometimes it's okay to keep them right around in here in these in the three uh, selections right here I'll keep that one right there uh, now down here in tone settings this is where you can set your white point black point and your gamma it's a lot like using the curves uh, dialog or levels dialog in Photoshop uh, the more white or the the farther to the right I move that slider the more white is going to show up and you can see my histogram here it shifted to the right so if I bring that back down you'll see that shift uh, back to the left the black point black point excuse me I want to bring that one up quite a bit because it does look a little blown out now you can see the effect really starting to pop through now uh, one of the, the cool things about this new version of Photomatix Pro is that when you're sliding your, your sliders, you can actually see the numbers move. The old version, uh, you would slide the slider. This wouldn't move until you let go, and then it would show you uh, what you had selected. So that was kind of a pain. Your gamma is your overall brightness um, of the image. All right, so that's not looking too bad here. I can have some details up here in the sky and the clouds, and then also down here in the in the shadowed areas. Now on to the next uh, selection here is the color settings. Uh, you can change the temperature of your image, uh, bring it way down for a cooler effect, or you can increase it all the way to the right, and you get a lot warmer effect depending on what you're looking for. I'll keep mine right around there saturation highlights it's exactly what it what it means um, and if you hover your mouse over each of these sliders it gives you a little info dialog right here so that you know exactly what each of these uh, sliders does this one adjusts color saturation of the highlights alright so if you increase the saturation of the highlights now that's maybe a little difficult to see so I'll increase it all the way take a good mental picture of that and then I'll slide it all the way down alright see so you can see the sky is pretty much gone desaturated sky and then the same with your saturation of the shadows see it's really gone this might be kind of a cool effect uh, but you have much more uh, control over this type of thing uh, once you save it from here and, and shoot it over to uh, Photoshop for instance smoothing settings micro smoothing the more smoothing you have the less of the effect see it's almost like a uh, surface blur it really smooths out the image now if you take it down to zero that's very little smoothing you get a lot of noise a lot of grain uh, that may might be what you're looking for I'll keep mine right around two uh, where it was Highlight smoothing, you really smooth out the sky and the, and the highlights. Uh, we'll take that back down to zero. That didn't look good at all. Okay, so those are pretty much all the settings. Um, again, just play around with them. You never know what, you, what you're going to get. I would stay away from the tone compressor. Um... I don't usually mess with this. It doesn't give you as many options or as much control over uh, your image like Details Enhancer does. So leave it with the Details Enhancer. You can go over here and, and play with it for a while. 
uh, but if you want the most control stay over here under details uh, you can also come back up here and be able to see the original um, image that you had and then the preview so that's not too not too bad so then all you have to do is hit process and it will process your your uh, image it keeps the same file name but then just adds tone mapped to the end so that's a good way to keep track of which images you've already done I have already uh, established a, a folder hierarchy if you will on my desktop uh, so I know where to save these now with the preview or I'm sorry with the um, demo version you're gonna get these watermarks here photomatics 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 uh, I do have a registered copy I just haven't uh, re-entered the uh, license key for it uh, but that's no no big deal I can do that uh, that just totally slipped my mind before I started this so you get the basic idea of what's going on here and uh, later on I can go through and and uh, show you what exposure blending and batch processing does so if you have any questions they have a tutorial here or you can go on up to the help menu and search through there so I hope this gave you a little bit more idea of of HDR high dynamic range and what you can do with it in the new version that you can download the plugin for Lightroom makes your uh, process much easier and uh, it's a lot of fun so give it a try and I'll see you in the next tutorial bye